this video, I am going to talk about the seven most common mistakes that I think new hires make during call center training. Hi there, Ninja! Welcome back once again. My name is Rhea and you're still watching Call Center Ninja, sharing with you real stories and tips to enjoy and survive your call center lifestyle. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing by clicking the red subscribe button on YouTube down below. And thank you so much if you have already subscribed. Why am I talking about this? Because of course, if you are a new hire in a certain, in a certain company, you would want to pass your call center training, right? Um, I have a video about that as well. I'll put it on the card up there so that you'll see it and you can get back to it later. And of course, you'd want to make the most out of your call center training so that you can learn and have fun as much as you can. And at the same time, be guaranteed that you will pass the call center training. Although at this point, I personally cannot guarantee that you, you can pass your call center training unless of course you do your best and um, you follow instructions and regulations. So my first, uh, the first common mistake that I think new hires make is not following instructions. I have been a trainer for a long period of time and uh, you know, even the simplest instructions really matter and if you think that instructions are just that there is actually a reason why they are called instructions because they are to instruct you on what to do or what to do next and therefore you have to follow those instructions they are always part of the tests right and most of uh, even even in college, in high school, and in school, if you're not following instructions, there is a high chance you will fail your examination. So it's the same with your call center training. If you don't listen and don't understand, don't comprehend, and don't follow instructions, then it can cost you. Uh, it can cost you your job. The second common mistake is not. Uh, working on your pre-employment requirements as soon as possible and I'm saying this because when I was a new hire uh, I really thought that I have already completed all the requirements and I was very diligent about it but there was this one requirement that um, I just did not really work on because it was a simple requirement it was just a sketch of where I lived that time and then I did not submit it and I was already taking calls on the floor when my supervisor told me that I haven't submitted that requirement yet. Uh, so I had to submit it, otherwise I will be issued a notice to explain and I would be given a warning just for not submitting that requirement. So don't wait that long. Uh, it was good for me because I wasn't issued an NTE or uh, I wasn't issued a warning for that. But... Uh, it wasn't good because I waited that long to comply with that very simple requirement and same to you if you can work on that requirement right away if you have the resources and uh, there are no life and life and death um, challenges or hindrance to that to getting that requirement then it would be best to comply to it right away as early as your call center training number three is having too much fun I am a big advocate of having fun during call center training because once you start taking calls, I don't think you'll have so much time for having fun because you'll probably have, you'll probably be tired all the time, especially with eight hours or nine hours sitting on your graveyard shift and talking to customers over the phone, especially if your account um, takes a lot of calls. Uh, so it would be best to to have fun as early as call center training but not to the point that it will harm you and will hinder your ability to think straight when you're already in your um, call center training a lot of new hires uh, often have this um, perception in mind that oh, okay I'm a new hire I'm in call center training so right after shift uh, we'll have a drinking session we'll get drunk and be merry every single day every weekend so I don't 
you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with drinking after shift because I've done that too. Or I'm not saying that I'm always right, you know, but I just don't think that there's anything wrong with doing that after shift. Um, what I think that is, a, that is a mistake or might be a mistake is doing it every single day or, you know, even if you have um, an early shift, that can really hinder your performance because, of course, as a... Uh, as someone who's working in a call center, it can get very toxic and you have to be up at night. It's different when you have to be up during the day. So you have to get as much sleep and rest as you can because you will not be able to digest and learn as much as you can during your call center training if you're always drunk, if you're always drinking, if you're always having fun. Remember that you are in that call center training to get a job and not to have too much fun. So I hope that means something four is not asking questions i am probably one of those people who don't ask a lot of questions or or actually maybe i have already overcome that because i've noticed that um if i am in a certain event or a gathering wherein the topic is really interesting to me i would always ask a lot of questions uh but you know when you are in call center training your trainer cannot read your mind nobody can probably read your mind so if you don't ask questions then you will never know the answer to what's bothering you or what's lingering in your mind so ask questions as much as you can but don't be that annoying person who asks who asks questions even when the trainer is still talking so be best to ask questions if the trainer has already paused or has already asked you if you have some questions because of course you don't want to disrupt the class by asking that question in the middle of an explanation right so it's all about the right timing to ask that question so ask away number five is not treating training seriously okay so i've seen this happen a lot when i was a trainer like i've seen so many trainees who are like they're just attending training just for the sake of it or for the heck of it i don't know what they want to happen to their lives what their goals really are but there are some trainees who just take it too lightly like uh they just deliberately sleep in class they deliberately do not study for exams they deliberately just do not care i mean why would you apply and attend a training if you don't even want that job you know maybe just do something else because aside from you are disrespecting your trainer's time and you're disrespecting your teammates time you know you are just wasting your time being there so might as well do something else if you're not treating training seriously number six is not saving money so yeah it's kind of difficult because when you're just starting to work you will have a hard time juggling your funds or your finances but actually even though you are already an experienced worker or you have, you're already taking class on the floor uh, we still experience you know difficulties and hardships when it comes to finances and when it comes to our budgeting our money so I'm saying this because a lot of trainees when they start and they're very excited to get their first pay they go on a spending and shopping spree and uh, I know you deserve a treat but you also have to save money because you wouldn't want to uh, to be absent or to be late in class because you don't have funds for your fare or for your transportation and yes it really happens of course when you work you have to have money to go to work you have to have money to get your private your requirements they also cost money you have to have money for your allowance and if you don't have extra funds because you did not save your previous pay then you will not have that drive to work even more and to learn in class because you're just waiting for the next payday. And number seven, last but not the least, is not unlearning. Because it's given that you will have to learn when you are in call center training. But the thing is, 
before you entered that call center training, before you entered that call center company, you have already learned so much, perhaps from your from your job internships, from your previous OJTs, from college, from high school, from your environment. You already have your own perception of things, you have your own background and beliefs of certain things. So listen to this. I've encountered quite a lot of trainees who would usually say, but miss, from what we've learned from our previous company or previous job, we don't have to do that, yada yada yada. Okay, we appreciate your experience, but you have to understand that the call center industry is broad and dynamic or ever-changing. So do your best to live in the present and unlearn some of the things you were used to doing before. You have to be open for new learnings. And that's about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please go ahead and share this video if you think anyone can benefit from it. Um, like and subscribe as well as leave a comment below if you have a question or if you have topic suggestions or anything you'd like to tell me. Thank you so much again for watching. I have videos every Wednesdays and Fridays. So see you on my next video. Take care and bye-bye.